Chapter 17, Walk the Plank. Barry woke up with a start, and he was surprised to still be alive. Where am I, he thought in a daze. It took a minute for him to recognize his surroundings and for everything to come back to him. The last thing he remembered was Captain Hook's sword swinging down at him, then blackness. The pirate must have knocked him unconscious with the blunt end of that sword. That was the only reason Barry was still alive. The room was dark, but outside the ship, the storm continued to rage. Bolts of lightning pulsed, lighting up the room at an uneven intervals. When the next one hit, he scanned the area. He was in the captain's cabin, sitting in a tall backed wooden chair. In the next flash of lightning, he spotted the rusty hook. It lay on the desk in front of him, nestled back in the velvet-lined box. It rested on top of an old maritime map that predicted an unfamiliar world marked with strange locations. Mer Mermaid Lagoon, Skull Rock, Hangman's Tree. Barry scanned the map, but none of the places looked familiar. Then the cabin fell dark again. He tried to get up, but his arms wouldn't move. He looked down. He was bound to the chair by scratchy thick rope. He struggled against it, but the ropes held him in place. Suddenly, the ship swayed and rocked on the waves. His eyes darted to the window. Fear surged through him. They'd set sail, heading for the open ocean. He could still make out the marina behind them, but it was growing smaller. Panic seized Barry's heart. Not only were his chances of escaping getting dimmer with each passing second, but he was also deathly afraid of the ocean. It had been his greatest fear for as long as he could remember. Ever since Rita had made him watch that stupid old killer shark movie when he was a little kid. No, let me go! Barry yelled, struggling against the ropes, even though it was hopeless. They wouldn't budge. That's when he heard footsteps behind him. Thump. Thump. He tried to look back, but he couldn't turn his head enough. The rope held him fast. The next pulse of lightning lit up the cabin, casting a long shadow over him. Captain Hook. The pirate paced in the shadows. His heavy footfalls echoed in the cabin. Where are you taking me? Barry stammered. Please, let me go. The violent rocking of the ship in the storm cut him off, making his stomach lurch. Bile flooded his throat, sing singeing it and making his mouth taste sour. He jerked his gaze to the window. They were moving fast, but the marina was still visible. That meant he still had a chance to escape. But the further away they got, the less likely it was that he could still make it back. Had Michael and John seen the ship set sail? Had the guard? Maybe someone was coming after him. We're going to a special place with a special name, Captain Hook said, still pacing in the shadows. Suddenly, a dagger arched down, stabbing the map and impaling the desk. Barry jerked his head back. The dagger had spared two words, Neverland. It looked like the dagger had that had been jammed into his front door. Well, what's that place? Barry choked out. Nothing about it looked friendly. Even the names of the places looked ominous. Oh, it's for lost boys like you who don't want to grow up, Captain Hook snarled. Just follow the second star to the right and straight on till morning. But I have to go home, Barry pleaded. He wriggled his hands trying to escape. One of his wrists slipped free from the ropes. My parents will miss me. Even my sister, they'll look for me, silly boy. Soon enough, they'll forget all about you, Hook said. You're the one who didn't want to grow up, remember? When we get there, you can walk the plank. Let it be a lesson to all the scurvy brats not to mess with Captain Hook. But sir, you got what you wanted. I brought the hook back, Barry said, feeling tears prick his eyes. You can let me go. I swear, I won't tell anyone you kidnapped me. 
You can get away what 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 I wanted, blithering idiot, was revenge, Captain Hook yelled. Wait, that's right, Barry said, thinking fast. You said I wasn't the first kid to play a childish prank on you. Who was the other kid? Did he get away? Oh, I'll still find him and make him pay, Captain Hook ranted. Thinks he can play a prank on Captain Hook? While he continued ranting about the kid who'd gotten away, Barry wriggled his wrist, getting it free from the ropes. Then he reached for the hook, snagging it from the desk. He used it to saw at the ropes at his ankles, cutting himself free from the chair. The ropes hit the floor with a thud, drawing the pirate's attention. Come back, thief, Captain Hook screamed, but Barry didn't wait. He leaped up and darted for the door. His sweaty hand slipped on the doorknob, a dagger whipped by his head, hitting the door by his ear. Thunk. But he finally got the doorknob to twist. The heavy door squeaked open. He bolted through it, slamming it shut behind him. He heard the pirate's heavy body slam into the door as the ship rocked dramatically, throwing them around. Barry staggered back to his feet and ran for the stairs. He bolted to the upper deck. The turbulent skies had started spitting rain. It hit the ship and stung his face. The white sails were unfurled, whipping in the strong winds. His eyes fixed on the marina in the distance, fading away behind them. The ship was moving fast. He didn't have much time before they left the safety of the bay. Out in the storm, the open ocean would be far more dangerous. Barry ran down the ship's deck, looking for a life raft or escape boat, or anything that could help him get to safety. He was running past the plank when suddenly something snagged his neck, jerking him back. Got you, blasted kid, Captain Hook hissed in his ear. He held Barry by the neck. His grip was iron tight. Barry was trapped. There was no way to escape now. Then, suddenly, that dark shadow swam past the ship, cutting through the water and circling by them. Tick-tock, tick-tock. The ticking noise echoed out of the waves. That was when the strangest thing happened. Captain Hook released his grip on Barry's neck. The dark shadow in the water made another pass by the ship. Tick-tock, tick-tock. The pirate cowered back from the water. No, he wants the rest of me, Captain Hook whined, sounding petrified. Get him away from me. Help me. I'll do anything. Barry felt confused. Then it dawned on him. He remembered how Hook had vanished from the library when he heard the ticking of the clock on the wall. He was terrified of that sound, and probably for good reason. Tick-tock. Tick-tock. Barry fixed his eyes on the water, where the dark shadow circled the ship, hunting for its prey. Suddenly, razor sharp teeth broke through the surface, gnashing at the air. Hook yelped and cowered back. No, please, don't let him get me. The fierce pirate captain, the one who had been terrorizing Barry ever since that fateful trip to the museum, now looked like nothing more than a scared little kid. Wait, you're afraid of it, aren't you? Barry said. Whatever is down there? Barry stood up, feeling how unsteady his legs were. They were shaking from adrenaline and fear, a potent com com combination, but he also felt a strength in them that he didn't know he had. He clutched the hook in his hands. Rain pelted his face, soaking his clothes and hair. Tick-tock. Tick-tock. No, he got a taste of me, Captain Hook screamed. He wants the rest. Barry stared down at the pirate, who no longer seemed so terrifying. Everything suddenly made sense as the, all the pieces clicked into place in his head. Is that how you lost your hand? Barry asked, raising his voice to be heard over the storm. That's all he got, Hook cried out, brandishing his bloody stump. He clutched it closer to his chest, shivering from fear, but he won't stop until he got the rest. Suddenly, Barry realized something amazing. He just solved his first real mystery. And not just any mystery, but the mystery of Captain Hook and his missing hand. He was just like the kid detectives in his books. He'd solve a case that even 
real historians couldn't solve. He felt satisfaction course through him, but then a rush of fear snapped him out of it. Barry fixed his eyes on Captain Hook, who continued to grovel in the shadows, cowering back from the water. Hook was afraid of the ticking and the water, but as soon as that creature left, the pirate captain would recover, and he'd probably be even angrier than before. Barry felt afraid, but solving that mystery had given him a boost of courage. He fixed his eyes on the dark water. He knew that he had only one choice and one way out. He stepped onto the plank. It wobbled under his feet. Below him, the waves frothed and churned angrily. The dark creature continued to circle. Tick tock, tick tock. Barry took a deep breath, inching out to the end of the plank. He waited for the next pass. Tick tock. Then he tossed the rusty old hook into the water to distract it. The creature thrashed in the waves, darting after the hook. No! Captain Hook screamed. Barry dove into the ocean, feeling the sharp sting of cold water envelop him. Right then, a huge wave slammed into him. The riptide caught his body, sucking him downward. He felt himself sinking further and further. He struggled to breathe, but choked on more brining water. White stars danced in front of his vision. He started to lose consciousness. His lungs were running out of oxygen. This is it, he thought. I'm going to drown.